Hello, Maddie here. Welcome to my channel if you have not been here before. So this week we are talking about one of my all-time favorite books, Tell Me Through Things by Julie Boxbaum. Boxbaum? I think it's how you say your name. Now, I have two copies because this is a well-loved book. This is my original copy. It's <laughs> super warped um, and very well-loved. I'm pretty sure it's been dropped in like the bath it's gotten rained on uh <laughs> it is very well loved so this over the christmas break uh one of my favorite family traditions is we go to half price and everybody gets to spend lots of money at half price and so i bought myself a new copy of tell me three things because i obviously needed it i'm talking about this book because I am super tired and don't have the mental capacity to think about many things, but this is one of my favorite books, and so I'm hoping talking about it will come naturally. <laughs> I have read slash listened to it many times, probably not quite double digits because I did only discover it, I think, in 2020. At least that's what my first stamp is in this book. I got a little bit ago, I got one of those like kind of library card thingies. And the first stamp is from 2020. I'm not sure if that's the first time I actually read the book, though. I feel like I read it before then. I know I at least listened to it last fall. Very recent in my memory. So this book is about why I can't remember her name. I don't know. Jessie. This book is about Jessie. And her mother died of, I think, cancer. And her dad gets remarried and moves her to L.A. from, I believe it's Chicago. And, you know, she has no friends. She does not know anybody. She's so annoyed that her dad just, like, got married when she's like, how can you even think about this? It's been, I think, over a year, like a year and a half, something like that, since her mom had died. And so she's angry and confused and lonely. And she gets an email from someone at her new school basically trying to give her advice. And she's like, is this a prank? Like, prank the new girl? And, you know, she doesn't respond. And she gets to a point where she is so desperate because she is, she's now, she went from, you know, going to a public school to this, like, super expensive private school, like, mansion in L.A. And she is, like, way out of her league. She does not understand how things work. She doesn't know who to befriend. She... Get to the point where she's like, even if this is a prank, I don't really care. I am so desperate to just understand anything of what's going on in my life and at the school. So she responds. Uh, the person goes by somebody, nobody, because, you know, they want to be anonymous. And, you know, me and anonymity is, like, my favorite. <laughs> she and somebody, nobody start emailing and then, you know, pretty quickly go into, like, instant messaging they don't exchange numbers. So it's an instant messaging through their email or whatever. I don't know exactly. The nuances don't matter. But through that, she, you know, learns how to put money on her lunch card. She gets recommendations on who to befriend. And if they end up being a really good friend. And just kind of things like that. She asks about there's this, like, giving day. And it's kind of like... Habitat for Humanity, like the whole school or their grade or whatever goes and helps build a home. How much help they actually do, I don't know. But she's like, what is this and why do I need clothes to <laughs> shoes? So they start, they strike up this friendship. And she starts making actual, actual friends. You know, she gets herself a job. She starts acclimating a little bit to life. She has a stepbrother who dad also died of cancer. I'm pretty sure that's how the, his mom her dad met in like, I think like a cancer spouse grief group. I'm pretty sure is how they met. So, you know, he's angry that someone's trying to come in and be his dad. And she's angry that someone's trying to come in and be her mom. And, you know, she feels like a guest in this home. And like, so it's just about her figuring life out. It's about her making genuine friends. Like I said, she gets a job. She starts enjoying her classes and her teacher. And she still experiences lots of you know, kind of awful teenager thing. She experiences bullying. She just struggles to, like I said, find her place. She feels like a guest in 
what's supposed to be her own home takes a really long time for her to feel like it's home. I mean, really for most of the book. And she's getting bullied. But about two thirds of the way through the book, something happens and she's like, I can't do this. Like, I am so overwhelmed and I am so tired of being overwhelmed. And so she gets the chance to go back home for a weekend. And she goes into that weekend wanting it to be all these things and realizing that she's different now. You know, her friends back home are different. Her mom is still not there. Her home back home is still not her home. It's somebody else's home now. And there's, they drive past it and there's, you know, somebody else's kids toys in the lawn sort of thing. And so she is struggling to find her place in LA, but then she goes home and realizes that. But this weekend isn't what she thought it would be. And it's, it takes some rough conversations and some very rough moments, but she realizes that she can't go back. She can only go forward. And so her and her, her friend from back, back home, they, you know, figure out their new normal and all those good things. And she heads back to L.A. more confident in who she is and what she wants and what she needs to do because L.A. is her home now. This school is her school and she comes to the realization that she doesn't want to leave the school. Yes, there are some really rough parts about it, but she does enjoy the life that she started to build. And... Throughout all of this, somebody, nobody has been by her side and has been just her friend and encouraging her and they come to blows when she's in Chicago and she, she's like, I can't do this. Like, I can't not know who you are because this is just like, we're so close and I've told you so much and you've told me so much and I still don't even know who you are. Their thing is, tell me three things. So it's. It's tell me three things, three things about your day or three things about who you are or, you know, whatever. So some of them are like not being able to sleep or playing video games. You know, if they're Star Wars or Star Trek, ketchup, mustard, that sort of thing. Some of it, some of it is really silly. Some of it's super deep. But their thing is tell me three things. And so that's how you get the title of the book. But you get back from Chicago and she's iced him out, basically. Yes, it's a he because course it's going to be romantic and one of his three things is like I think we should meet and she's like yeah it's it's time and through all of this you know she's made friends and one of those is a boy from her class that she's had a crush on and so she's very just so conflicted because she's starting to genuinely have feelings and build like an actual friendship relationship with this person from her class but she also has for months been building this relationship with somebody, nobody. And so she's like, I need to either get over this person from my class or get over somebody, nobody. And she's not quite sure which one it's going to be until they meet. And the book ends with the meeting and it's it's great. And I'm I'm trying not to show actual emotions of how I feel about the end of the book because I don't want it to be like so obvious because I mean, it's it's really not. You're really unsure <laughs> until the very end who it's gonna be I feel like Julie does Julie Buxbaum she does a very good job of not making it obvious how the book is gonna flow how it's gonna go how each scene is gonna play out and that's something I very much appreciate because as you know I'm a very predictable person my likes are super predictable the stories I like are super predictable the things I recommend are super predictable so I like when I can say genuinely about things that I recommend that yes it's predictable and that it's cute and it's gonna end happy with whoever she ends up with. But you don't know who that's going to be until the very end. It's so good and so cute. It's so relatable because even though high school is over 10 years ago, there's still lots of uncertainty in life. They're still figuring out who the heck are my friends or who do I even want to be friends with? Who do I want to put time and energy to? Who's, who's worth it? Who's not worth it? Who's going to just end up hurting me or bullying me or hating me for something I can't even control, you know, like her stepbrother who hates her when she's like, I'm just as powerless in this as you are. Like, you kind of need to get over it because like the, I am, I, I can't do anything. I am as helpless as you are. Life is full of just discovering people and yourself and what you want to put your time and energy into and realizing that you can't go backwards. And I'm very grateful that I'm not one of those people that it's like high school was the epitome of everything. It was the pinnacle of my life. It's never going to be that good again. I'm grateful that I very much enjoyed my high school. I 
had amazing friends. I, I loved my school. I had very good memories. There's still bad things that happened. It wasn't like perfect, but it was, I, I can look at high school fondly. And so not that in terms of, you know, I don't have moments of wanting to go back to high school necessarily, but just having moments of wanting to go back to when you might have still been struggling, but you knew what those struggles were. That's not how I currently feel, but, you know, just over the last few years, because I've, you know, we've moved and I've changed jobs and lots of things have changed that it's, it's, there are moments when it's hard not to look back and be like, oh, back then when, even if it was hard, it was still like a known hard. And so that was maybe easier to deal with than an unknown difficulty. Even if the current difficulty is not as difficult as the past difficulty, it is an unknown difficulty. So you you would rather have the thing you know. But coming the other side and being like, okay, I, I can't go backwards. You can't go backwards. You can't go backwards. We can only be present and move forward. That's literally all we can do. You don't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> and so this book is just a good reminder of Life's not easy. It wasn't easy. It is not currently easy. It will not be easy in the future. But there's still lots of very good things. There's still lots of very great people and circumstances and finding your home matter where you go. And I feel like this book is a good reminder of it with a happy ending. <laughs> so even if you're in the midst of something difficult, it kind of just gives you the hope of her difficulties don't magically go away by the end of the book. You know, she still misses her mom. She still misses you know, her best friend back home, but she learns to enjoy and appreciate the place that she is now and appreciate it for its own things. Or, you know, she appreciates the weather or, you know, the job, the new friends, the new music, the new everythings. She appreciates them for their own and the value they add to her life in a very different way from the things before that added value to her life. So that's, I just, I really like this book because it's, it's not like this super difficult, going to make you sob sort of read, but it isn't like this just super easy, fluffy, surface level, feel good book. It has genuine depth to it and has genuine feelings, but it gets you to a place of healing. I don't want to say like wholeness or completeness because she isn't whole or complete by the end. And are we ever really whole and complete? Because we're always learning and evolving and changing. And so... Something that looks complete today might not look complete tomorrow. and so. She, but she gets to a place of satisfaction with where she is and the unknowns. And I love the journey that you go on with Jessie. Um, she has her butt-headed teenage moments for sure where you're kind of just like, you need to grow up a little bit. Not like, oh, you just need to like get over your mom's death and stuff. But it's like, no, you're you're being a jerk to your dad and you're being unkind and rude to people that didn't do anything to deserve it. You're just angsty. <laughs> and just because you're angsty or upset doesn't mean you get to spew those negative things on other people. And it's just like, okay. And so she has her moments, but she's a teenager. So like, what are you going to expect? But yeah, so that's the book for this week. Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. It is one of my favorite, favorite books. It's in my top 10. I have a top 10 list that I update periodically. It doesn't get updated often because it takes a lot to kind of bump something else out. But it is in my top 10. It has been since I read it. I absolutely adore it. Highly recommend this book. I hope you look into it. I'm pretty sure you can get on Libby. Let's look real quick. Well, okay. It's going to depend on your library. I'm pretty sure at my library I can get it. Uh, I'm actually like 99% sure because I'm pretty sure that's where I listened to it last fall was on Libby. <laughs> yeah, so I rented this in November of last year. It's only nine hours. And if you're like me, I don't like listening to things at the normal speed. It's too slow. I like listening to the same rate I would read it because I'm a pretty fast reader. So listening, oh my gosh, I'm just like, okay, come on. But you can speed it up. So depending on the book, I'll go from anywhere from like 1.25 to 1.4. But probably available on Libby. Loads of ways to listen and read these things. They're awesome sauce. This is an amazing book. It's like I only read it like two months ago, so I probably won't reread it just because of this video, but I might read my favorite parts. That is one thing. I don't know if I've actually said this in a video, but I know I've said it to many people, but my kind of like biggest 
reading faux pas is I really like dog earring pages. I know most readers are will be like, ah, no, don't touch my books like that. But I am such a sentimental person that I really like knowing where either I or another reader have stopped along the way of reading books. So I, I do typically use bookmarks. I do typically use bookmarks, but I'm not anti dog earing when needed. You know, I won't dog ear other people's books or, you know, library books, things like that. I don't dog ear those. Don't worry. It's just my own books. But a fun fact about me, because I am such a rereader, but I, so every once in a while I'll be like, I just want to reread this one scene or this like one set of dialogue or whatever. So normally you dog ear in like the top corner, but for things that I want to reread, I will actually dog ear the bottom. And this one has, there we go. So we've got one. There's, oh, you can't even see that. But there's one of my dog ears. And there's one like two pages later because there's like nonsense in between. And then there's like two pages later, there's more. You can't even, shadows, you can't see that. There's a dog ear right there. Um, but at like two pages later, there's another one because like I don't want the whole thing. But it's like the beginning of a scene and an end of a scene. But lots of things happen. So it's like I want to know that I want both of these moments and that they happen really close together. But they're different moments. <laughs> so they're dog eared separately. So here's a dog ear and this is when she's in Chicago and her and SN, somebody, nobody, SN are getting ready to meet. And then there's like, oh, oh, you can't see them. There's a whole bunch right here near the end as all the really cute things are happening. Yeah, that's why. One, I do like having physical copies of books that I really like. So while I love things like Libby and Audible and Kindle and Nook and all those things are really great and wonderful. If I love a book, I am going to get a physical copy because I like being able to pick it up at any given moment and just reread those moments that I'm like, I just, I need this specific feeling. And this book at this moment gives me that feeling. So I do like having my physical books. It's also, you know, I've said this before, but it's like, I like having, it's like emotional support book that, you know, you just like keep with you at all times, whether you're actually reading it or not. <laughs> uh, and you got to have physical books to do that. Oh, but there's your fun fact about Maddie, about my dog earing the bottoms of books. If they're read a lot and reread a lot, they will have dog ears at the bottom. I don't do it with all my books. I don't just do it if I see a cute moment. It has to be books that I like re read and reread and reread certain moments. We'll get the dog ears on the bottom. So anyways, I really hope you read this book. If you read this book, you need to let me know your thoughts and feelings on it and what your favorite parts were, because I always want to know what they are because I know what my favorite parts are but I know that I am not everybody obviously and everybody has different favorites and different things that they want to feel and so I always want to know what your favorite parts are so if you read this book you gotta let me know because it's so 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 good it's so good it's so good with all of that I hope you have a great rest of your day I hope you have a great night great week great weekend great month great year I hope you have all of the greats because you're truly worthy and deserving of them so until next time side Dan my book just fell <laughs>